From sea to shining sea throughout the solar system and extending to interstellar regions beyond, this is The Kevin Smith Show. Comments and views expressed on The Kevin Smith Show are those of the people that make them and do not necessarily reflect the views of Kevin Smith, The Kevin Smith Show, or its affiliates or sponsors. folks and welcome to the Kevin Smith show whoever you are wherever you happen to be all around this <clears throat> very beautiful planet that we call earth and we call it home too do we not I'm delighted to be here this evening and I thank you for being here and uh, I, I just want you to know that the Kevin Smith Show is here because you have a right to know and because you matter. And uh, tonight we're going to do something we haven't done in a while. Uh, open line, BYOT, bring your own topic. And we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. I'm going to kick it off tonight with an email that I got. Uh, I got it over the weekend, actually. And uh, it's from uh, Dale... K in Oregon. Hi, Kevin. I heard you say, I have heard you say that NASA knew the moon was occupied before they started landing astronauts there. Can you elaborate or is this more in the form of an opinion? So I'm going to, uh, when we, when we come back from break, I'm going to start with that tonight and uh, I'm going to show you and explain to you why I have said that. Some of you um, may already know why I say that. Some of you may not. But um, I will be sharing with you information that uh, I have not shared previously on any show. And so that's where we'll start. Uh, and then we'll go to uh, BYOT, Bring Your Own Topic. And uh, uh, that means that uh, whatever you want to talk about within the genre of the strange and the unexplained will be absolutely okay. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be UFOs. It, uh, it could be um, planetary anomalies. It could be um, ghosts. It could be telekinesis, uh, teleportation. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about just about anything that you want to talk about um, that's in the realm of the strange and unexplained. Let me uh, point out to our new listeners that right in the middle of your screen, if you're at kevinsmithshow.com, right in the middle of your screen is a big word that says K-Files. That's our free newsletter, and I would invite you to uh, subscribe subscribe to the newsletter. It's absolutely free, no strings attached, and you can unsubscribe anytime you want to. I think you'll really enjoy it. And I'm getting uh, quite a response to one of the videos that I posted the link to in this last edition of the K-Files. And uh, people are laughing until their sides split. And if you got the K-Files, then you know which one it is. And... Uh, <laughs> I got to tell you, mainstream media, lamestream media, they had it coming. 
I don't know how that happened, but they had it coming. And um, I know you're enjoying that. Well, if you're not getting the K-Files, subscribe tonight, and uh, then you'll get automatically an email with a link in it for you to click and activate your subscription. We'll be back right after this. music used here at the Kevin Smith Show is from independent artists. Most of it from independent artists at musicalley.com. Go over to musicalley.com. Check out thousands of artists and thousands of great independent tunes. Musicalley.com. <laughs> Welcome back to the Kevin Smith Show. Uh, as I said, uh, this is going to be a, uh, an open line live night, and uh, BYOT will talk about whatever you want to talk about. So it works kind of like uh, the old jukeboxes. Remember, you put your, uh, put your money in, and you make a selection, and, and then it plays the song you selected. Well, you don't have to put any money in, but uh, you just, uh, when we open the phone lines in a few minutes, you just dial that number 
and uh, you tell me what it is you would like for us to talk about, and we'll talk about it. Uh, it doesn't matter whether we've covered it on this show or not, as long as it's in the genre of the strange and unexplained, we'll be glad to do it. But I'm going to kick it off here tonight, as I always do on uh, Open Line Live and BYOT, uh, with, uh, I'm going to put uh, something on the table for you. And uh, this is uh, something, I'm going to be sharing something that I have not shared before. And uh, for those of you just now tuning in, the reason is this email that I got over the weekend uh, from Dale out in Oregon. Uh, Hi, Kevin. I have heard you say that NASA knew the moon was occupied before they started landing astronauts there. That is correct. I have said that on a number of occasions. Uh, Can you elaborate, or is this more in the nature of an opinion? Fair question. Um, And, you know, uh, now this hasn't happened in a long, long time. I used to have um, some problems with people who would take something that I said and make it into something I didn't say. And I guess maybe some of that still goes on. I I don't hear about it anymore. Uh, But they would say, well, you said blah, 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 blah. And I didn't. You know, and so I got I got pretty testy about that. I don't mind being quoted. Just quote me. You know, uh, don't don't put words in and don't take words out. Just quote me, and that's cool, uh, because whatever I say, I will stand by it. And uh, I'll admit that I I said it, okay. And I have said that. That's exactly right. Dale has quoted me correctly here. I have said NASA knew before they started landing astronauts on the moon, they knew that it was occupied. And I've said it in connection with the reason I think we did not see very many real pictures from the moon. I think most of what we were shown was faked. Not all of it, but I think most of it was faked. And I think the reason is they knew it was not only occupied, it was fairly heavily occupied, it was busy up there, and they didn't want us to see that. Now that, Dale, that is an opinion, okay? But uh, what I'm going to do tonight is give you some of what's in the background of me saying that they knew it was occupied. And I don't know whether to say it is an opinion. It is. It is my opinion. It is. That's my opinion. But it's an opinion that rests upon evidence from NASA. How about that? Uh, So I'm going to actually be sharing a photograph that I have never, ever shared before. And it is, uh, although you may have seen it, it's out there on the Internet, it's on NASA's website. Uh, But I'm going to show a photograph that I have never shown before. And uh, this photograph is perhaps one of the most important photographs ever taken by any Apollo mission. Probably one of the most important photographs, one of the most significant ever taken by any NASA mission. It's a photograph that was taken during the mission known as Apollo 8. Now, Apollo 8 launched from Earth on December the 21st, 1968. And that mission was itself very significant. The commander was Frank Borman. Other crew members, James uh, Lovell, 
and William Anders. And see, everybody remembers uh, the guys that first stepped out onto the moon. Nobody remembers much else about the, the Apollo missions. But Apollo 8 was an extremely significant mission because it's the first time that humans had flown beyond low Earth orbit. So these guys uh, were sort of in the position of the Wright brothers, space-age Wright brothers. Uh, they, they were taking a real first, Mormon, Lovell, and Anders. And they're taking a huge step. First time humans had gone beyond low Earth orbit. Took them three days to get over to the moon, and they didn't land. Now you might say, well, then it wasn't important. Oh, far to the contrary, it was one of the most important Apollo missions ever. Had that mission failed, being the very first attempt flying beyond low Earth orbit, had that mission failed, it's questionable as to whether the other Apollo missions would have flown. So these guys were taking a huge, huge chance, personally, with their own lives. Uh, yes, all of the astronauts take a huge chance with their lives, but these guys were taking all of those same chances that the other astronauts take with the added um, dimension of completely unknown territory uh, in terms of how it would affect humans. And uh, so it was, it was a big, big deal. So they didn't land on the moon. What they did is they orbited the moon 10 times in 20 hours. Doesn't uh, sound all that adventuresome or spectacular, does it? But I assure you that it is spectacular. During that mission, they took a photograph, lots of photographs. <clears throat> the photographs were by no means what we would call high-definition photographs uh, by today's standards. And they're black and white. Uh, they're a little, a little bit fuzzy, not too fuzzy, because they were in low orbit around the moon. It was a test of the command module. And so they were in this low orbit around the moon and they were taking photographs. The photograph that is the background for the graphic used on my website tonight uh, is that photograph. Now we're going to take a look at this photograph rather in detail and I'm going to talk about it. You, uh, as you look at it, in fact, let me just, uh, let me just go ahead and, and crank it up here on the, on the screen for everybody, for those who are watching. That's the moon. I think you can see, before I even begin talking about this and pointing anything out, I think you can see that the moon has some, this picture of the moon has some features that really probably shouldn't be there if it's not inhabited. And uh, this is the one that I say is one of the most significant pictures ever taken of the moon. Now, I'm going to uh, point out to you why. Now, remember... These guys are in low orbit over the moon. And as they're passing over this, they snapped a picture. I think the very first feature that is really, it tells you this is not geography, 
is there is a perfectly circular white area. Now, uh, some craters are circular, but they are not perfectly circular. Uh, this circle has symmetry, and by symmetry I mean the inside and outside edges of this white circle are as even as the, as the sides of a roadway. I don't know if that is a roadway. I don't know if it's something else. I don't know what that is. But it's not geology. It's not something that was done by the forces of geology on the moon. It's constructed. But if we take a look at this picture uh, a little bit closer, I want to point out some things. If you will look extending out into the middle of this circle, it's very, very dark, but there is some construction out into a large, large construction out into the middle of this circle. The circle surrounds the base of that construction. That leads me to the opinion that what we're looking at with this circle may in fact be a roadway. Maybe not, but it may be. But there is, we, we can't see details of this construction. Uh, I will tell you that I tried light blasting this, light blasting being taking out most of the dark area. Uh, and since most of this picture is dark, that had a very negative effect on the picture. But in doing it, I was able to see, and I'm going to point it out with the arrow uh, that you see on your screen, that this construction out here in the middle is in sections. And I'm pointing that out to you now. And each section has a little dome on the top of it. If you look pretty carefully, you will also see there's a large rectangular opening back into what looks like a hillside, but that hillside is part of this construction. There's a dark rectangular opening right there. And so you could either go in or out right there, but you're going back into this area behind that opening. It also appears that there are some buildings along a uh, appendage that extends off of the right side, it's to our left in the picture, of the construction. There is an appendage off to the other side as well. On top of the appendage on the right side, our left side, it looks like there are buildings. But there's more to this picture, so let's take a look at it. And uh, let's see if we can kind of get oriented here. Here's part of that white circle on the left side. Here's the rectangular opening. And we can see that this construction goes back and uh, for quite some distance and trails off. And uh, we can't make out much of what this is back here at the, at the top of the picture. But we can see what looks like buildings over on that right side, our left side of the construction. The most interesting thing to me, though, about this is the white circle and these buildings that are out here in the middle of this white circle, each one with a dome on top of the building. The white circle, the buildings, and this rectangular opening back into the underground, if you will. 
Now, I said this is one of the most significant pictures taken of the moon ever. And the reason I say that it's one of the most significant is because even though it's not high definition and even though it's not, uh, uh, you know, just a crystal clear picture, we can very obviously see that there is construction here as opposed to just geology and craters impact craters and things like that. I read on the internet uh, one person's opinion, a person that uh, I pay attention to, who said that uh, over on the right side of the picture that that area looks like vegetation as opposed to rocks. Now, you know, uh, for me that's a leap. I really could not say that that looks like vegetation as opposed to rock because this is black and white and I can't tell. Uh, it's a very rough looking area and I, I really cannot tell if that's vegetation or lots of rocks. But I can tell that this circle just doesn't fit with something geological and uh, I can tell that there is this rectangular area that looks like an opening back into the underground. I can see, now you really have to look carefully as I pointed out, I did, and I didn't see this until I did the light blasting, but it ruins the picture. You can't really see anything else, uh, and you can't see anything except these shapes. But it's very, very dark in that center, but there are these buildings and these buildings standing right next to each other. It may all be one building. It may be one construction, but each one, uh, the one closest to you is the shortest one. The next one is a little taller. The next one a little taller, and the back one is the tallest, and each one with a dome. All right, we're going to step away for a break, and we shall return right after this. Captured in time in a search for the day 
Welcome back to the Kevin Smith Show. So we're talking about this photograph that uh, was taken by Apollo 8. This photograph is the one that I said is perhaps the most significant one uh, taken by Apollo missions. And the reason that I say that is because it's before anybody landed. It's This is the first trip where uh, you actually had astronauts on board circling the moon. They have eyes on this stuff. They're taking pictures of it. This is the first time humans are at the moon. They're not on it, but they're at the moon. And what do they get? They get this photograph. And uh, there, there's some really significant stuff here. Really significant stuff. Now, I want to point out, I want to, I want to show you something. There are lots of little things in this photograph. I'm sure when this photograph got back to NASA, I am absolutely sure that the guys on the ground went absolutely ape over this. So I've already talked about this white circle and uh, I, I don't know what that is. Uh, it's a roadway. Maybe it's a moat full of water. I don't know what it is. This is a black and white photograph. But that circle, it's big. And it's symmetrical on both sides all the way around. Uh, and then you have this opening that I was talking about, this rectangular opening back into the underground, back behind it. But watch this. We're going to zoom in and move. We're actually going to be moving uh, back beyond what you can see on your screen right now. Here we go. Okay, so let's see. We're in. We're into this. Here's the circle. Here's the rectangular opening. We're moving back here on this looks like a peninsula out into an ocean although understand I'm not saying it's an ocean I'm just describing what it looks like back there so we're back here all right and look at all these little towers sticking up back here you see all these towers you know you don't see those of course you do Bunch of little, looks like flagpoles sticking up. They're not flagpoles, they're some kind of towers sticking up. And, um, well, let's, uh, let, let, me, let me try something else here. There we go. All right, so what we looked at was we looked in this area way back at the back that trails off and there's actually an area back there that uh, I don't know what that is um, that's uh, maybe maybe some more part of the base if if this is a base um, this area back here looks like there's some development back here all right so what's so exciting about this and what's so important about this picture? It happened in 1968. Somewhere between December the 21st and De December the 27th. Because uh, they landed, they took off on December 21st, so it wasn't that day. It took three days to get over there, so 21st, 22nd, 23rd. So they're over there 23rd. Uh, it takes them three days to get back. They orbited 10 times. 
they got back on the 27th, so 6, 5. So uh, 23rd or 24th, they took this picture, December the 23rd or 24th. These three guys in Apollo 8 took this picture. And this picture very clearly shows engineering on the moon at low altitude. It's a low altitude flight over the moon. And it very clearly is showing engineering. Some some type of engineering. And it was not until Apollo 11 that they actually landed and stepped out and said, we're here now. Well, that's not exactly what they said. <laughs> they used other language. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But that's that, that was the official version of we're here now. When they landed Apollo 11, they knew about this. And do you know where that is? That's in the Sea of Tranquility. Yeah. That is in the Sea of Tranquility. Remember the Sea of Tranquility? Tranquility Base, Houston. The Eagle has landed. And they knew that was there. So Dale, um, my opinion is, it is my opinion that, that NASA knew that the moon was occupied before they sent the Apollo missions there, before they sent humans to land there, before they started landing. This picture is why I say that. This picture from Apollo 8 of the Sea of Tranquility, that's in the Sea of Tranquility, that picture was in NASA's possession. They knew about it. They had seen it long before Apollo 11 arrived at the moon. And they landed. So let me ask you, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up the phone lines and uh, ask you to uh, kind of join in on this. But let me ask you a few questions about this. I, and look, I realize this picture is not the greatest quality in the world, but it is what NASA has released. So that's what we've got. Uh, but uh, from this picture, we can see there's engineering there. And if we can see it, you know NASA saw it, and you know they knew it was occupied. And therefore, if they knew it was occupied and they landed somewhere near this giant installation, because they landed in the Sea of Tranquility, so relatively close to that, they landed. Was the real mission something other than just go there and discover things on the moon and, you know, do geological studies and gather a few rocks. I mean, they did all of that, but was the real mission something more related to the people that occupy this thing? First contact, maybe? Maybe maybe these astronauts were like ambassadors, first envoys. What do you think? Six two three four 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 five eight eight nine. Six two three four 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 five eight eight nine. Now, if you are outside of the United States or you're outside of Canada. Uh, we uh, have an additional option for you because international calling can be expensive. And that's called the flash message. So if you go over to my website and click right above the picture about tonight's show is a link that says flash message. You click that. Uh, if you're outside of the USA and outside of Canada, 
Well, you can ask your question that way. Uh, or you can call us, all right? 623-444-5889. Now, if you don't want to talk about this, let's talk about something else. This is what Dale wanted to talk about. This is what Dale wanted explanation about. And I hope I've answered the question for you, Dale. Caller, you're live on the Kevin Smith Show. Your first name and from where are you calling? Kevin, this is Brent from Wyoming. Hi, Brent. <laughs> Sorry about that. Mm-hmm. Um, from my perspective, looking to the right of that uh, ring, mm -hmm. that ring, that white line that goes kind of looks like it goes around the corner. Yeah. It looks like it's on the edge of a bluff or a coal mine because I'm used to I'm used to seeing mining things out here in Wyoming. Yeah, it steps and up. And above it has a retaining wall. It's very minor. Something you don't think about, but it has a retaining wall. It's not much of a retaining wall, but it is a retaining wall. Yeah, I see that. So what do you think this installation is? My guess, going from my where I'm coming from, I would say mining operation, possibly a launch facility with, with a circular thing. I wish we had the ability, uh, I wish the software could have brought out the details of these structures in the middle. Uh, because they are just absolutely jet black and uh, the software just couldn't bring anything out and the more I light blasted it the more they disappeared and uh, but you can see you you could see the outline of them in the light blasting and I'm tracing that outline with the with the arrow cursor yeah uh -huh. and can you see as I trace it can you see them yeah and they each have a little dome right up on top of them. Mm-hmm. I see that. Yeah. What do you think that would be? I honestly don't know. <laughs> I, I, I can't even guess. Some, some kind of technology we don't have, that's for sure. Now, if this was on Earth, and if that structure was not out in the middle of that circle, I would say that circle looks like a missile silo. Or a launch facility, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do you think of the the rectangular opening back into the underground back there? What do you think that would be? I can see that, but I can't. I I want to say it's a freestanding building, but it, I'm, I'm, you may be right. It may be an opening. Well, let me zoom in on it. Uh, well, let's see. In order to zoom in on it, I have to change that shot. Hang on just a moment and I will do that. Okay, now I can zoom in on that. Hang on. And uh, the, the, this is uh, the manual zooming you've heard me talk about. I don't have mm -hmm. it, I don't have it pre-done for you. A little hand crank, you crank it up till it looks good. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Okay. There it is, right there. I don't see it. I. What I've got is a picture of you and oh, there it is. Okay, you just the video's a little bit behind. Okay. I see what you're talking about, but I still don't. Cause look at that picture. It's got a gray spot. Right. Move your mouse back over where it was at the corner. It, it looks like it's got a gray grayed out area. I don't see a grayed no out there. area. Right, right to the left of your mouse, where right straight diagonal, straight, right down. Uh, there's no grayed out area, man. It must be your screen. It's probably my screen, but yeah. yeah. I, I, I want to say it looks like a frame of something, but I don't know what it is. It may just be pipe. Yeah, it may just be pipe, but it's a frame of something it looks like. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, you want to hang on through this break? Sure. All right, hang on. All right, folks, we'll be back right after this break.
right, welcome back. I apologize um, for those who are watching. You didn't get any music during that break. <laughs> I apologize. Um, I think it was pilot error, but I'm not sure. I'll take the blame for it. But the deal is you missed a great song called The Long Black Train. Uh, Brent, are you still with us? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, so I want to get your general impression. Here we are, Apollo 8, 1968, right about Christmas time. They shoot this picture. NASA's got this picture and a whole bunch more before okay. they send Apollo 11 up there. I mean, you still got 9 and 10 to go. And then Apollo 11 goes, and it lands where? Right next to this. In, right next to it, yeah, that's right. Uh, so let me ask you, do you think that this picture would support what I say, that they knew before they sent astronauts that it was occupied? I'm going to couch this this way. It's all up to photo interpretation. They had they had photo photo interpretation from World War II forward. If they could not see what you and I are seeing, they're idiots. <laughs> so, do you think that that shows engineering? It shows engineering, construction, and design. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a possibility, though. Uh, could and be wrong. Uh, look. Uh, and let me say this to you, but let me also say this to Dale. Uh, there is a possibility that they saw the engineering, but had some reason to think that it was ancient and not occupied. So it might not support what I say, that they knew it was occupied. That's a possibility. I think it is occupied, but, and I think there's, right up till today, there's evidence that it's occupied. You got backyard astronomers with their very good telescopes getting video of UFOs flying all over the moon. So uh, I think it is occupied, but maybe they thought it was unoccupied and ancient. I'm going to, I'm going to add this. They had astronomers in the 1920s and 30s who saw those same lights. Well, you're right. So I don't think they took, they took a hiatus. They just said, all right, it's occupied. Now what do we do? We want, to, we want to go to the moon and back before the end of the decade. What do we do? Well, why do you think they chose to land in the Sea of Tranquility right next to this thing? My guess, this is just a guess, is that Apollo 9 and 10, they surveyed the rest of the moon, and this was the least occupied. Well, that's a pretty good guess. I don't know if it's accurate, but it might be. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense to me. I so, wouldn't wonder whether, whether we're going to land in the middle of the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, look, thanks for the call, man. Yep. Okay, you take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow. Good thoughts. What about yours? Um... Uh, you know, uh, we always like to get pictures that are clearer and more high resolution than this, but this was 1968. You got to remember that. This is a pretty good picture from 1968. Caller, you're live on the Kevin Smith Show. Your first name and from where are you calling? Uh, Kevin, this is Jerome from Pennsylvania. Hello, Jerome. Hi. Um, my uh, question to you is, uh, if, if you think that, if you thought this was the most significant photograph, why did you wait until now to bring it on the air and talk about it? I have looked for a long time for a, a better photograph. You, uh, you can see, when I put this up, <clears throat> you can see why I would like to have a better photograph. I mean, that's not a real good photograph. I mean, it's not bad, but it's 1968, and there, it's black and white, and it's not high res, and I would just like to have a much better photograph than that. Um, I have looked and looked and looked, and I gotta tell you, this is probably not the best photograph in existence of this area. 
<clears throat> it's the best one NASA's going to let us have. Um, uh, a, a question. Before the Apollo 8 uh, launch was, before it was launched, do you think NASA knew this, I'm going to call it a facility because I agree that it is a facility of some sort. Yeah. Do you think that NASA knew it was there? You know, uh, I don't know. I have considered that. We sent uh, just a fleet of probes leading up to the first Apollo flights. We sent a fleet of probes to photograph the entire surface of the moon. And they said that's so they could look for landing spots. Well, okay, that makes sense. But in those photographs, they had to know. Now, I don't know if they saw this exact facility, but they had to know that there were facilities like this all over the moon. When, 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 when the astronauts took this picture, was it a, was it, you know, were they looking out a porthole and snapping pictures, or did they have a mechanical type thing where? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, they were looking out the window and taking pictures. When, when, um, if you were astronaut Smith uh -huh. in that capsule, mm -hmm. and this particular picture you were taking, how long do you think you would have to capture that? Well, you would, you know, it's not flying past underneath you at a real rapid rate. Uh, imagine really imagine being in a, a jet aircraft flying over a city. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be similar to that. My, my thing is, I, I, I would think, first of all, if, if I was taking the picture, and uh, it, that would be definitely something I would snap. I'd make sure I got. Uh -huh. And... Uh, I think they kind of knew it was there because uh, I think you would have a time limit on when you would be snapping that picture. Um, yeah. So I see your point. So they knew it was coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very possibly. Or it may be, they. I mean, this, this is a possibility. They knew they were going to be flying over the Sea of Tranquility and they were going to get pictures of it. And may, it's possible this surprised them. I, you know, we just don't know about that. But uh, they did get this picture. And I bet well, you, think about this. You're flying over a city. You got a camera. You snap a picture. You have time. And, you know, they actually had to, to wind film. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't digital cameras like we have now. So you had to wind the film to the next frame. So snap wind, snap, wind, snap. You get three, four, five pictures as you fly over this thing. I bet you there are much, much better pictures than this. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, I've looked. I have looked and looked and looked and looked in all of the obscure places on the Internet. And uh, this is the only, only shot of this that I have found. I, I respectfully uh, disagree with Brent. I think that they went to a, a populated area that they chose to land, not a, as unpopulated as they could. So why, uh, okay, well, why do you think this is a populated area you, in, instead of abandoned? I, because I, I see I, I see a bunch of buildings, and unlike some other buildings that in other pictures that look like there are ruins and stuff, this seems to be intact. It does, doesn't it? Y yes, yes. There's no rubble or anything like that. Uh huh. Yeah, it does appear to be intact. So, so you know, the ambassador theory that you proposed, uh, it, it, it makes sense to me. Uh. Whenever I showed, you know, I said, well, that looks like uh, flagpoles back there or antenna towers sticking up. Did you see those? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, I, I think you'd be naive to to ignore those, you know, just like Germans were naive when they flew over England in World War II and they didn't know what the radar towers were. Uh-huh. 
Uh, that was a mistake. Yes. <laughs> that was a bad mistake. <laughs> um, what do you think about this rectangular opening back into, or I'm saying it's an opening back into the, I'm saying it's, it goes underground back there. Yeah, what, what do you think that like would you, be you for? You can see part of it's dug into the hillside, and part of the constructed part is still, you know, jettisoned mm -hmm. jet out. Uh-huh. Oh, for what purpose, I don't know, but it definitely goes in underneath the hillside then. Yeah, yeah. Well, the reason also, uh, you know, you were asking, well, if I, uh, can you hang on through this break? Sure, Kevin. All right, hang on. All right, folks, uh, we're going to step away, and we'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Kevin Smith Show, and um, this is Open Line Live, Bring Your Own Topic Night. Uh, I have thrown onto the table a picture I've never discussed before from Apollo 8, and it is one that I think is one of the most significant pictures ever taken of the moon. Um, on the phone is Jerome, 
and uh, from Pennsylvania. And Jerome asked a good question. If I think it's the most significant, why did I wait till now to bring it up? And uh, well, I've been searching, 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 and searching for a better version of this picture. And I have not found one. So I finally uh, decided, well, in response to this question from Dale, just to go ahead and use the picture. Uh, this picture, more than everything else, this one, more than everything else, tells me that NASA knew before they landed men on the moon that it was occupied. Uh, so Jerome, uh, let me ask you this. Uh, do you think that uh, you've already said you think that this is actually occupied and not some ruins? Uh, and I agree with you. And I agree with your reasons for saying that. Um, so let me ask you this. That's in the Sea of Tranquility. Apollo 11 landed in the Sea of Tranquility. Do you think those astronauts had contact with whoever was in there? I, I would say I would say yes, uh, only because uh, just like you said, uh, they uh, they had this picture before they sent Apollo 11 up there, and uh, they knew where they wanted to go. There was reason to go there, and to go there and just not make contact it would be nonsensical. Well, and I would think whoever whoever was in there uh, would want to come out and take a look at who or what had just landed. Oh, sure. You know, when, when we have a UFO that comes down, uh, we, we don't just ignore it. Our government goes in there and scoops it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what do you think would have happened if these guys in this facility had come out and scooped up these astronauts and said, well, you know, they're from somewhere else, so let's, uh, let's see what information we can get out of them. And they took them to their version of the Pentagon and held them there and questioned them and uh, did all that stuff we apparently have done to ETs. How do you think that would have gone down, down here at NASA? Well, there, uh, NASA would have reported that there was a wreck of the spaceship, and, uh, you know, and, and no survivors. Well, that facility right there mm -hmm. is the reason I think we didn't see the real landing. We didn't see it, the real thing, when they first got off of, uh, and, and stepped out on the moon. And I don't think we saw very many real shots of the moon because the possibility that these guys were going to be taken into custody existed. And they were, they were not about to put that on live TV. No. You know what, Kevin? Everything you laid out here, I, uh, it, it, it's logical and it makes sense. And uh, uh, once again, I think you hit the nail on the head and... and uh, to yeah, you just hit the nail on the head. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Jerome, you have another question or a comment uh, about no, this? No, Kevin, I monopolized enough. I'll, I'll let other callers in. And, and thank you for interesting observations. All right. Thank you. For those of you who have just joined us in this second hour, welcome aboard. Uh, we are in the midst of BYOT, Bring Your Own Topic. And uh, we can do that, or we can talk about this photograph. Caller, you're live on The Kevin Smith Show. Your first name and from where are you calling? Hi, Kevin. It's Lasha from Vancouver. Hello, Lasha. Hi. Do you know, I agree with you. I think this is the most significant picture I've ever seen of the moon because I think I have a crazy theory. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think you've, they've captured an event here. It looks to me as if that round circle is something that's automated and opening, because right behind it you see another one that's coming into formation, a circle right behind it, and over the other side where the um, lights are coming out, it's like something is being launched from there. Well, maybe. Maybe they're coming up to check 
on this capsule that's going, this Apollo 8 capsule that's flying overhead. Maybe, maybe they're I scrambling so. their craft to go up and check it out. It's very possible they triggered some sort of a um, device that would have been um, trying to figure out what they were. And that when you, when you zoomed in really close on that um, rectangular thing, uh -huh. um, it looked to me like there was a, um, it was a probe sticking up, and the top of what was the rectangle was actually part of the background. That might be. You might Almost be like exactly a, a right. sensor. Mm -hmm. But what was what really blows me away about this this photograph? I mean, the the photograph to me, in in all of its black and white dullness, is still spectacular. But what really blows me away is that is the sea of tranquility. I've never seen the sea of tranquility look like that before with so much rock. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've said it's the Sea of Tranquility. Maybe it isn't. Who knows? But, you know, the Sea of Tranquility, when they were trying to land, they could not land where they were programmed to because of all the rock. Oh. And they were looking for a smoother place. Do you know what? You know, Kevin, I remember another thing. Uh -huh. I remember hearing somewhere on the Internet a recording of an astronaut saying, there's something shiny over there in that crater. What is that? And NASA saying... Don't go there. We know that we know about that. Don't go there. That's right. Remember that? Go uh, go the other way. Go the other way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've heard that. I wonder if that shiny thing was like in the back of that picture where the things it looks like orbs are emerging from a really bright circle. Uh, yeah. Now, th you know, that's uh, back on the back end of that peninsula area. <clears throat> yeah. Uh that is really interesting stuff there. It's and, so shiny. Uh huh. And, and if that were the sun, other things would be shiny. Mm hmm. From there, like it looks to me like those are one, two, three, four, five, six orbs kind of emerging, even more down, trailing down towards the the bottom of the photo. Well, uh, you know, one of the things I thought about, if mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the the shot that's right there now on your screen. Yep. In the lower right hand corner, there's a triangular shaped white thing. And it looks like it's coming up off of the ground. It does not. Uh, it looks like it's airborne. And what I've yeah. wondered is, are we looking at a squadron of stuff being launched to go up and check out this Apollo? Exactly what my instinct was when I first saw this picture. Mm -hmm. And do you see where the big circle is? Yeah. It looks like a big radial tire. <laughs> uh huh. Right behind it, it looks like there's another circle forming, but the lines haven't pushed out enough to connect. It's like something's opening. Yeah, it could be. Could be. So there's the same sort of oval shape back there, but the lines aren't connecting yet. Uh -huh. I think something's emerging from the center of that, some sort of machinery. Well, certainly on the left side, it's either standing in that circle or emerging up out of it, one or the other. I think it's something automatic, to tell you the truth. I don't know why I get that impression, but it would make sense that if if there was a craft suddenly triggering it, that up would come guns or some sort of technology, and they'd <laughs> launch some someone to go out and take a look. <laughs> well, well, you know what I mean? Yeah, maybe I've know, watched too many movies. <laughs> well, here's the thing. You, you've heard my theory. Uh, if you listened last night, and I talked with Dr. Sala, uh, you heard me say this. I cannot imagine that we're just completely unique in the universe. I think whatever other intelligent races are out there are going to be pretty much like us and in a lot of ways. Their technology is going to be better. Uh, they're going to be way ahead of us there. Uh, they're going to be way ahead of us in, in knowledge of science and things like that. But at their core, they're going to be pretty much similar to us. And how do we respond if suddenly over one of our Air Force bases, suddenly there's a low-flying craft that we didn't know was coming in. Right. Uh, you know what we do? We scramble jets. We go up and put eyes on it. Right. And I, I think would, that's what's going on here. I would think but they would I, not be much I get the impression different. that it's automatic, like it's some, something that's been triggered, you know? Like, uh, that's I possible. don't know that there's a human or a, um, a mind behind it. I think it's, uh, I think the people are underground. 
on the, on the moon. I, I would think they probably would be, but yeah. uh, and you know that big rectangle that I said looks like to me an opening. Mm -hmm. Would I would think if this you know and I said that circle, if if that were on Earth. I would say that looks like a missile silo. Yep. Okay, so that rectangular opening back into the hillside, I would think would be like the service port where they could come in and out of there to service whatever's in that circle. You know, I disagree here, Kevin, because okay. when you zoomed in on that before, uh -huh. I, I thought when I, you know, as the picture is now, it looks like a rectangle, but when you zoom in on it, the top part of that rectangle is actually looks like a line that's actually coming out of the um, just the terrain in the back of it. Well, let it's me zoom like, in on um, that again. And the real thing is what is um, um, really interesting is that vertical thing sticking up, which looks like the side of the rectangle. That looks like a missile to me. Do you see the line on the very top? Uh-huh. That's going sort of up and at an angle? That looks like just part of the rocks. Well, you might be right. I see what you're talking about. But the other side looks like it has a, a definite machine shape to it, you know? Uh, it's got kind of a needle nose at the top. Yep. Like something being launched out. And by the way, uh, I'm going to zoom in on that some more. And I'm going to point out something here. Um, no, I just clicked on the wrong thing. Here we go. Uh, How embarrassing. The technology on the moon is so much better. <laughs> and we can't zoom into the picture. <laughs> well, I'm having to do this we manually. Humans, you know? <laughs> yeah, I'm having to manually zoom this. If you, yeah. yeah, I see exactly what you're saying. And if you look uh, from the top of that all the way to the bottom, it gets broader at the bottom, just like our rockets do. Yeah. It, it could either be a rocket being launched or some sort of a, a probe that, if it's triggered, opens these launch bays or I don't know I mean it's hard yeah. to tell but it looks to me as if that the top part is actually part of the background it might be it might be uh, and and just sort of gives the appearance of forming a rectangular opening it very yeah, well because could there's be. some darkness in front of it it mm -hmm. looks like an opening yeah but the thing that amazed me is that circle in the behind the big radial tile circle I'm talking about right here it's like there's another one opening right behind it. No, no, over on the left side. On the left side. Right on, right there, right up top there, right there. That looks like one that's forming. Uh, well, you might, you might be correct. There is something standing up there. Let me. It's uh, like the lines of it haven't been put into place yet. Um. Do you see? Yeah, and you've got something standing here in the middle of that. I think there's two of them. Uh -huh. This one, the second one, just hasn't opened yet completely and made a round circle. Well, so let me go back to the, uh, the, the idea of, okay, that is in the Sea of Tranquility. Do you, we, we've asked, do you think they did sort of like, you know, first envoy ambassador kind of contact? Or do you think, you think the astronauts got off of Apollo 11 and said, holy crap, what have we gotten into here? Do you know what I think, Kevin? I think that they had help going to the moon. I don't think they went there on their own. And I think they knew that there is beings inside the moon and technology that is left there. Mm -hmm. And I think that they weren't allowed to land this time. And I think they triggered something. Well, that may be exactly correct. And uh, I, I think that later they went back and they were only to go to a specific area where they weren't going to be able to take photographs of things, or they faked the photographs. Well, the photographs that we saw, almost all of those photographs that we have seen from the moon have been shown by experts, not just guys on the internet, but by experts, uh, have been shown to be staged or yeah. doctored. Some of them are real, you know, there's reality in them, but then they've been doctored. Um, and I, th I think that this 
is why. Because I think there's stuff like that all over the place on the moon. I think so, too. You want to know something crazy, Kevin? What? Uh, it'll take a, few, uh, a second to explain this, but I live right. in Vancouver, mm -hmm. and there's a planetarium in Vancouver, and it has a, a, a small museum there to the moon, uh -huh. the moon landings. It's only five places on, that they have an actual moon rock, mm -hmm. and they have it there. And I went to see all this, and I tell you, the, the spacesuits that they wore, I'm sorry, they were so rickety. Yeah. There's no way that would have kept out any kind of atmosphere. Anyway, the, the, um, the space rock was actually brought to Vancouver with a guy with a, with a handcuff on and a, and a case and a full guard coming through the airport and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know what kind of deal Vancouver did to get it. Anyway, the, the space rock is standing in this pedestal and the pedestal is, oh, probably up to about, you know, the middle of your chest. Yeah. And it's got this plastic all around it, so you have to reach underneath it and up to touch the, the, the space rock. Yeah. And me, you know, I know you might think I'm crazy, but I'm psychic, and I can sense things when I touch objects. And I know why they have it in that pedestal, because when I touched it, I had amazing visions and images of this incredibly strobing light that was just strobing and this clicking sound, this really intense clicking sound, and it felt like um, something that was from ancient and very, very far away, not from the moon. And I know, too, that the reason that they have it in that pedestal is so that you can't stand up straight and touch it, because when you do, your spine is upright and you can sense things better. Uh -huh. Anybody that's psychic would know that. Well, it, you know, they have found that the rocks on the surface of the moon are older than the surface of the moon. Mm. That's pretty I, interesting. I, and the yeah, moon... I, I'm, it's strange how mm. that would be. And the moon is older than the earth. And so people that cling to that theory that the moon has somehow got busted away from the earth and that's where we got a big ocean and that's where the moon came from. Nice theory. But it's older than the Earth. Yeah, I'm. You know, I I don't know what to think about it, Kevin, because because I know that um, from a a psychic point of view, what I've sensed about the moon is that it's a natural thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was brought here from way beyond somewhere. I think parts of the technology that are inside the moon were, mm -hmm. and I think there's a a group of beings that are in there that have sort of gone inside the, the natural hollow of the moon and set up camp, if you want to put it that way. I don't think the moon was sort of brought here as some big satellite from elsewhere. Well, I, I, don't even, I, I don't even have an opinion about that. I don't know. I mean, I've heard that, and I've heard that it was slung in here out of a, uh, another galaxy as that galaxy bumped the Milky Way and, you know, mm. I've heard all kinds of theories about I don't know. But they know from the moon rocks and they know from some of the dirt that was brought back, the, they call it regolith, right. that the rocks sitting on the surface are older than the regolith underneath them. Mm. And the regolith underneath them, the dirt, is older than Earth. Something weird going on. Something very strange. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, and plus we have writings right here on Earth recording, you know, the time uh, that these, these certain tribe or people existed from before the time when the moon was in the sky. So there was a time when people on Earth looked up and did not see that moon. I don't know where it came from. I don't know how it got here. But... There you go. Very interesting question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's, it's one, I bet you NASA has the answer to all of that. We're not going to hear it. I think you're right, Kevin. I think NASA knew that was there when they went. I don't think yeah. they expected to get a photograph of something so sudden. But I well, think they knew it was there. They got the photograph, and they released it. And back then, they didn't know I was going to be out here talking about it. <laughs> Little did they know. <laughs> Little did they know. Yeah. Lasha, I got to run. Thanks for the call. No problem. Thanks, Kevin. All right. 
A uh, very, very significant photograph and uh, one that I think, uh, you know, the, the existence of this photograph, and as I said, you can find that it's at NASA. Go to Apollo 8, look at all the photographs from Apollo 8, you're going to find this. Um, the existence of that photograph and the fact that it's the sea of tranquility tells me that well it, it raises some huge huge questions and the first question is since they knew that was there why did they choose to land basically right next to it in the Sea of Tranquility. There, you, you might say, well, they just wanted to go check it out themselves. Well, see, let's assume that they knew already that it was occupied. Let's assume that some of these white orbs we see coming up in the picture are coming up off of the ground and, and these guys actually saw them in flight. That would be uh, Frank Borman, James Lovell, and William Anders. Let's say they actually saw those things in flight coming up off of the ground. And they saw this. You know they saw it because they took the picture of it. Okay. So they know it's occupied. I think the, the, the question that comes to me is, did they then make some kind of contact with these people that occupy this thing? Because if they landed right next to it, kind of as unannounced guests, uh, I think they would have already seen in flight that you know these people could fly and they could maybe muster a, a scramble a squadron to go up and check out the capsule. That may have happened. They, they already knew that, so you wouldn't just drop in unannounced because that might be construed as an aggressive act and might kick off a war between them and us down here. So that brings the question, did they then have contact with these guys? My mind tells me they had to. There had to have been some contact that made it okay for Apollo 11 to land basically in the backyard of that facility right there. Not exactly, but I mean, you know, it was close. It was in the Sea of Tranquility. And it would seem to me that there would have had to have been this contact and a prearrangement made. All right, we're going to take a break and we'll be back more with your calls right after this.
And welcome back to the Kevin Smith Show. Uh, tonight is Open Line Live and uh, BYOT. So far, all the calls have been about this picture. Uh, we kicked it off with an email that I got from Dale over in um, Oregon. And uh, Dale asked, uh, I don't know if Dale, you know, Dale can be a guy's name or a girl's name, so I don't know. Uh, so he or she asked, uh, Hi, Kevin, I have heard you say that NASA knew the moon was occupied before they started landing astronauts there. Can you elaborate, or is this more in the nature of your opinion? And um, so that's what I've done. Uh, it, yes, it's my opinion, but it's based on evidence from NASA. And I'm sharing uh, some of that evidence here tonight. I think the most significant evidence uh, pertinent to that question uh, that they knew before they landed astronauts there that it was occupied. And how do I know that? Or why do I say that? Because Apollo 8 took this picture. And Apollo 8, they didn't land. They circled the moon uh, 10 times in, in 20 hours. And um, they left Earth on the 21st of December in 1968. They returned to Earth on the 27th. They splashed down, uh, landed, if you will, um, on the 27th of December, 1968. Now, the broadcast, the live broadcast uh, from their orbits around the moon, that broadcast uh, that was the most watched broadcast in the history of broadcasting up till that time. There have been others that surpassed it since, but at that time, that was the most watched broadcast in the history of broadcasting. The picture that I've been discussing here tonight, this picture was taken by Apollo 8, and it shows uh, and it, it, you know, this is this is not like a picture that's uh, from many, 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 many miles out in space. This is a low flight over the moon by the command module, a low altitude flight, as the command module would do. It was a test of the ability to do that and to control it. That's what Apollo Eight was all about. All right, so there was no intention to land. It was a low altitude flight of the command module as it would be required to do when they actually were going to land and then have, uh, after the astronauts landed and did what they're gonna do, they gotta get back into their little lunar module, blast off, and go back up to the command module. Well, the command module has to be in low altitude. So it's a test of that. And so this is a low altitude flight, like you're flying over a city uh, here on Earth. And what we see is construction, engineering. Uh, we, I mean, this, for 1968 standards, that's not a bad photograph. Um, with, it's, with today's digital high resolution and super high resolution and it would be considered not a good photograph. But for 1968 standards, uh, that's a pretty good photograph. And we can see that there's stuff there. So if we can see it, NASA saw it. They knew it. And that's in the Sea of Tranquility. The Sea of Tranquility is where Apollo 11 landed. And so... Uh, Relative to the question asked by Dale, you know, could I elaborate more on why I say they knew it was occupied? Relative to that, that is the most significant photograph ever taken of the moon. And relative to almost every other question about is anybody on our moon, I think that's probably the most significant photograph. Uh, but this is a BYOT, and that means we will be happy to talk about whatever you wish to talk about. Uh, BYOT, for those who are new, stands for Bring Your Own Topic. 
And all you have to do if you want to talk about something else is pick up the telephone, 623-444-5889, 623-444-5889. Give me a call and we will talk about what you want to talk about so long as it's in the world of the strange and unexplained. Uh, we have a flash message that has come from Kate in Norway, and it's real short. It says, Hi, Kevin. Remember Alternative 3? Alternative 3 was a um, television show. It aired in the UK, and the series that it was a part of was canceled. Bang! Right after, right after it aired. If you've never seen Alternative 3, go watch it. It is a fiction, uh, fictionalized, uh, you know, like X-Files, uh, presented as though it were an investigative news report. But there are things in it that a lot of people think were very real. One thing is an interview with a fictional astronaut who has been to the moon, and uh, he's saying, you know, they knew that it was occupied. They knew that there were people there, and they never told us. And um, you also see what appears to be a real landing on Mars and life moving in in that uh, camera shot. Uh, don't know if that's real. or It appears to be real. Don't know if it's real. But Alternative 3, it's really worth watching. If you haven't watched it, go over. I think, I think uh, you can see it at YouTube. I think it's on YouTube. Uh, but just go over there and, and type in Alternative 3, and I think it'll pop up, and you need to watch that. Um, I'm not real sure the connection that Kate is making. I mean, there's a couple of different connections you could make with uh, Alternative 3 and this. Uh, one might be that this might be actually a human base. Think of that. We have had guests on this show who uh, are supposed to be in a position to be in the know who have said that uh, we had bases on the moon, joint bases with both the Russians and with extraterrestrials, and that we had them uh, since about 1957, 58, somewhere along in there. And that at the time when President Kennedy said, we're going to send a man to the moon and return him safely to Earth in this decade. At the time he said that, we already had bases there and we occupied bases there. So it might be that when the president said that, and I asked the question, I, I, I don't know, I can't remember the guest. I think it was Robert Dean, but... Uh, I, I can't swear to that. I asked the question at the time when the president made that speech and said, we're going to send a man to the moon. If we had bases there, wouldn't he have known that? Wouldn't he have known this was already doable when he said it? And the answer of the guest was, certainly, he would have known that. And so he would have known it was a sure thing. What that, if all of that is true, then what that implies is that uh, when President Kennedy said that, the military already had space travel down and uh, already had bases on the moon and already knew all about all this stuff, uh, but perhaps NASA didn't. And so the 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 what that would mean then is that the whole NASA moon program uh, <clears throat> would have been President Kennedy's way to sort of introduce all of that that we're looking at in this picture here tonight to the world get NASA to do it and once they do it 
then they can say, oh, guess what we found? I mean, that would be the theory. Of course, NASA did not say, oh, guess what we found? NASA is Department of Defense. They're under the Department of Defense. Department of Defense, of course, has all the military. And uh, so if that scenario was accurate, and if that is actually one of our bases in that picture, the military maybe didn't want people to know it and told NASA, you better shut up and you better put some pictures out that don't show that stuff. So that's another possible scenario. What do you think about it? This is uh, really, really an intriguing photograph and a very important photograph. It's important because of who took it and when. And it, stay, it, it stands up and screams, NASA knew for sure before they landed Apollo 11. They knew for sure. And they, you know, they landed Apollo 11 essentially in the backyard of this facility, in, in, in the Sea of Tranquility. All right, I'm going to um, do something a little bit different now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to another picture from NASA. And uh, this picture is a picture that uh, was taken by Apollo 15. I know it's one you're all familiar with. And, well, that's not the shot that I wanted. Here we go. Um uh, uh, this picture is taken by Apollo 15, and it is a picture looking down onto the moon and uh, showing what appears to be, uh, well, a spacecraft laying down in a crater. And... Uh, you know, like a, uh, a crashed spacecraft laying down in the crater. Uh, is it? Well, I don't know. On the right end of it, you know, it's got, it comes to a point like a, uh, like the, like the bow of a ship. Uh, on the top of it, there is a raised section as if perhaps that were where the bridge is. Now, it doesn't look like a ship, you know, an ocean-going ship, but it looks like a crashed spaceship is what it looks like. Now, I know that you're familiar with it because uh, not too long ago, there was a big hubbub that came up on the internet about Apollo 20. And some of you are scratching your head saying, oh, wait a minute, there was no Apollo 20. After Apollo 17, there were no more Apollo flights. Well, actually, we know that they had two more Apollos paid for. One of them built and the crew selected Apollo 18. And they for some reason, NASA just said, that's it, we're not going back to the moon. Boom, that's it. Now, whenever, uh, now this, this was photographed by Apollo 15. It was also photographed later by 17. Uh, but they said, we're not going to go back to the moon. And when they were asked, they said, budget. But it had already been paid for. Uh, caller, can you hang on through this break? Yeah. All right. All right, uh, we're going to step away for the break, and we'll be back right after this.
Welcome back to the Kevin Smith Show. We're on final approach. Let's go to the telephone. Caller, you're live on the Kevin Smith Show. Your first name and from where are you calling? Kevin, this is Rusty from Michigan. Hello, Rusty. Hello. Well, some say that the moon is a place where your soul goes when you uh, die, expire, whatever. Mm -hmm. So if this is true, what you're what we're contemplating about uh, them knowing what was already on the moon. How does that play into uh, the theory about that's where your soul goes? I would say that pretty much blows the theory. Well, just because your soul goes there does not mean that there's not also ETs there. Well, okay. So how do you think it plays into it? <laughs> um, I don't. I just was contemplating, well, maybe uh, then one caller mentioned about them living inside the moon. So, I don't know. It, mm -hmm. uh, it would appear that the moon is in the dimension that we are, correct? It would pretty much have to be in order for us to be able to see it, yeah. Either one's true or the other, you know, one or the other's true. Both of them can't be true, probably, you know, like you were saying originally. Uh, if that's the place where souls go, then. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure how that would work. Uh, let's see. Well, maybe your soul goes there and maybe inside the moon is, is like the soul recycle center or something, you know, for reincarnation. I don't know. Yeah, well, that's what some say it is, you know. Well, I, I will tell you this. We're all going to find out. Yeah. 
Yeah. We, we will all find out one day uh, what happens after you leave here and where do you go, you know. But I, at this point, on this side of that event, I, I just don't know. Well, I can tell from the picture that looks like some kind of lights. I don't know what it's to or anything else. You know, of course, it's all speculation on our part, but it definitely is some kind of lights down there. There are lights down there. Um, and uh, let me uh, let me go back to... Uh, let me just scoot that over back over there where it where we can see what's in that circle. Um, now that picture to me just looks like it's could be a city. That's what it looks like to me. Well, it could be. Those could be skyscrapers. Uh, but the um, you know if 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 you watch that cursor each one of those buildings is taller than the others there's a diagonal line you could draw right across the top of them so we start at the front and it's a shorter building and then a little taller and then a little taller and then the tallest one at the back right and you know a city maybe maybe it is a city is there any possibility that there's some kind of mineral on there or that the sun may be shining on or whatever? I, you know, all of that's possible. Uh, you know, it would have, from this picture, it would appear that, uh, and let me see if I have a picture that's pulled out further. Uh, no, that's not it. Here we go. Maybe this one. Okay. The left side of your picture is darker than the right side. So what this is either nighttime is falling on what you said looks like a city right. or I'm not sure maybe dawn is coming from the right. I'm not sure which way that goes, you know, maybe nighttime has just fallen and we're seeing light recede away uh, to the right. Uh, it's, in other words, light, light is, it's still light to the right. Where were the astronauts when they took this picture? Can't we determine that by the position of the astronauts? Well, the astronauts were in the capsule fly, of Apollo 8 flying above this, and that's over the Sea of Tranquility. But, but I don't... Like what yeah, uh, that I didn't look up. Uh, yes, the time of day I think might be listed, uh, but then, you know, I, I'm just not sure about that. Now that could also be uh, water, right? Well, there's a possibility. I mean, you know, we, uh, you're talking about these dark areas? Yeah, it could be water and ice. Yeah, it could be. Um, we, we, we just don't know. Um, I think there is, well, I don't think I know that there is a lot of water on the moon. Uh, but I don't, I'm not aware of any evidence for like rivers of ocean or oceans. There's, a, <clears throat> there's enough water on the moon that there is a tidal effect on the water that has been measured by the Indian spacecraft. I think it was called Chandra. Um, and they measured the tidal movement of water on the moon. And there you can go on the internet, you can find a, uh, a graph, uh, not a graph, but a graphic that shows you that as the moon goes around the earth and creates a tide effect on the earth, that same movement has the earth creating a tide effect on the water that's on the moon. So maybe the earth was put here to stabilize the moon. <laughs> maybe. Uh, maybe. It could be. The way around. <laughs> maybe. But, uh, but you know, the, there was a time when there was no moon in our sky. Uh, according to some ancient documents, 
But that could be at a time before the earth arrived in its current location. There's indications that the earth did not originate here. Right. So, I mean, who knows? I don't know. Maybe the moon was already here and we arrived and suddenly there's a moon in our sky. Uh, but uh, the guys on the moon, maybe, you know, uh, suddenly there was an earth in their sky. Maybe that's the way they view it. So, um, the um, craft that is seen by, is it Ed Grimsley? Uh huh. With the night vision? Yeah. Well, now, these days it's seen by thousands right. of people have seen them. Yeah. Right, but his name is synonymous with, you know. Yeah, it is. It up. Mm -hmm. But so, if the, going, going with that scenario, those crafts are more likely coming from the moon, don't you think? Well, I don't know if it's more likely, but uh, certainly it would be likely, yeah. And so, you know, this could be their cities. I mean, it's could be, could be. Um, but it, do you see though why I say it, it specifically relative to Dale's question? Why do I say NASA knew? This is the most significant photograph there is because it was taken by Apollo 8 of the Sea of Tranquility before they sent Apollo 11 to land at the Sea of Tranquility. They had this. They knew it. I agree with you. I mean, I, I can see where this photographs. It, the only problem I have is I don't know if it's telling me that it's man-made or if it's just ice and water. Well... Ice and water didn't build that circle. And ice and water didn't build symmetrical buildings, each with a dome on top of it. Yeah. If that's what those are, yeah, correct. But. Well, it's some kind, I, when I say buildings, I mean construction. I'm not sure uh, exactly what they are, but they are symmetrical. And by symmetrical, I mean we have the shortest one, then the next one is a little bit taller the next one a little bit taller, and the last one the tallest. And so there is a symmetry there. And each one has that dome. Hey, that's the end of the show, man. Thanks for the call. All right, yeah. All right. All right, uh, that's going to do it for this evening, ladies and gentlemen. My friends call me Steel Eye. My enemies do too. You can call me whatever you want. Just keep coming back again and again and again. And remember, we are listener supported. We need your support to keep doing what we do. And uh, until next time, so long, everybody.